In this video, we're going to begin to walk you through some of the basics of the propagation of uncertainties. Let me try to uh, give you a sense of the issues that we're dealing with. I go into the laboratory and I make some measurements. I have a block of wood and I measure the height, the width, and the depth of the wood. And I, and I assign individual uncertainties to each of those measurements. So I have three measurements and three different uncertainties. Now I want to calculate the volume of the block of wood and the uncertainty of the volume. Calculating the volume is trivial. To calculate the uncertainty correctly, I recognize that that uncertainty is surely going to be determined by the, the values of the individual uncertainties of the length, the height, and the width. But we have to, to do this correctly, we have to carefully understand how we combine the uncertainties of individual measurements. And I'm going to begin to illustrate this with two simple examples, the first of which <coughs> leads to a result that is very intuitive, the second of which it's a very simple example also, but it leads to a result that is much less apparent. And in fact, in order to sort things out, we're eventually going to have to resort to some calculus. So let's start with the first example. And it goes like this. I have <coughs> two bars of copper. I measure each of their lengths. Let's put them on the board. Here's bar number one. I'll call the length of this bar L1. I measure it to be 20 centimeters, and I estimate the uncertainty in that measurement to be 0 0.2 centimeters. <clears throat> a little bit of notation, when we talk about the uncertainty in a measurement, we often notate it like this. Delta L1 is equal to 0 0.2 centimeters. And I measure the length of bar number two. a little bit longer, let's say that L2 is equal to 30 centimeters, and I don't do a very good job with this measurement, I end up with an uncertainty estimate on the order of 0 0.5 centimeters. Okay, now I'm going to take my two bars and I'm going to connect them together. I'll glue them together with a glue that's infinitesimally thin or something like that. I want to determine the length of the composite bar, and I want to determine its uncertainty. So the length of the composite bar L is simply L1 plus L2, and with my best estimates of the lengths L1 and L2, L, of course, is going to be 50 centimeters. What's more interesting is the uncertainty in L. What do we estimate the uncertainty in that composite length to be? To get to the answer, we're going to begin with kind of a brute force numerical approach, and it goes like this. I'm going to look at the maximum and minimum values of L1 and L2, and I'm going to ask myself, how can I combine them to form max, pop maximum and minimum values of L? And that's pretty straightforward to do. Let's see how this goes. The maximum value of L that I might expect, given the uncertainties in L1 and L2, is going to be equal to the maximum value of L1, which is 20.2 centimeters plus the maximum value of L2, which is 30.2 centimeters, uh, 30.5 centimeters, excuse me. So this is going to be 50.7 centimeters. And the minimum value in L is going to be 19.8 centimeters plus my estimated minimum value for L2, which is 29.5. And if I add those up, I'm going to get 49, oops, 49.3 centimeters. So this is a pretty crude way of doing things, but what it tells me is that if I measure the length of this composite object, I expect its length to be 50 centimeters, and I expect the uncertainty in the length to, to be such that I wouldn't be surprised at values that are as large as 50.7 nor as small as 49.3. And I notice that 50 centimeters, my expected value for the length, is exactly halfway in between 50.7 and 49.3. And from this one calculation, I can see that I can write down my value of L like this. It's going to be 50 centimeters plus or minus an uncertainty, which I can just see from these numbers, is going to be 0 0.7 centimeters. So that delta L is 0 0.7 centimeters. And if I step back and look at this result, in fact, I see that 
it's the result that I might have guessed at in the first place. That is, the uncertainty in L, 0.7 centimeters, clearly it's going to be determined by the uncertainties in L1 and L2, and those uncertainties are 0.2 and 0.5, and they very conveniently add up to 0.7. So that tells me that for this particular example, the uncertainty in the length is equal to the uncertainty in L1 plus the uncertainty in L2. That is a result that, in fact, we, I haven't proved this to you, but this result is generally true whenever we have two measurements with individual uncertainties and we combine them uh, in, a, in a simple summation to form a composite. The uncertainty in that composite is simply the sum of the uncertainties in the individual measurements. Okay, that was intuitive. It was simple and straightforward. If the propagation of uncertainties was as straightforward as this one example. There'd be no need for this video. The next example is going to begin to illustrate some of the complexities in this issue. Before we go to that, though, let me ask you to do one thing. Let's just slightly rearrange this first example as follows. Suppose that we take object L2. We've measured its length to be 30 plus or minus 0 0.5 centimeters. And now I'm going to cut this object to form a second object, which is going to be L1. So I saw this thing here. This is what's left over. I measure the length of this piece. It's 20 plus or minus 0 0.2 centimeters. And I want to take these two results and ask myself, given these two uncertainties and these two numbers, what is the length of what's left over from the original rod? And what's the uncertainty in the rod? In other words, what we're going to be doing, or what I'm going to ask you to do in a moment, is to consider the following problem. Suppose that we construct a length L that's equal to L2 minus L1. What is the uncertainty in the difference between L2 and L1? Is it, again, the sum of the uncertainties of L1 and L2? Or should we this time subtract one uncertainty from the other? Or do we have to do something else? So what I'd like you to do is just to go through this quick numerical calculation for a subtraction. And when we come back, we'll see if we're all on the same page. Trust that you found that the length of the remaining piece of the rod was 10 centimeters plus or minus 0 0.7 centimeters. And the important result is that the uncertainty in the difference between L1 and L2 is in fact the sum of the individual uncertainties delta L1 plus delta L2. And this leads to a general result, which is useful to know, and that is that when adding or subtracting two quantities, the uncertainty in the result is always the sum of the individual uncertainties. Okay, let's move on to example number two. Almost as simple as the first example, I have a rectangular piece of wood, and I measure the dimensions of the rectangle, and they are as follows. The, I'll call this W, the width of the rectangle, is 20 centimeters with an uncertainty of 0 0.2 centimeters, and the height of the rectangle, we'll call it H, and let's put some numbers here. Let's call it 10 centimeters, and I will assign the uncertainty to be 0 0.2 centimeters again. So I have two individual measurements, just as in the first example. And now we want to calculate the area of the rectangle and the uncertainty of the area. <clears throat> the area of the rectangle, of course, is just going to be W times H. So this is 20 times 10. This is 200 square centimeters. And the interesting question is, what is our estimate for the uncertainty in the area? I'm going to follow the same procedure that we followed for the first example, that is a kind of brute force calculation, and then we'll see if we can uh, sort out what's going on with the results. So again, I'm going to calculate a maximum possible value for the area and a minimum possible value for the area. And let's see how that works out the maximum expected possible, the, the maximum expected area of the rectangle is going to be 
20.2 centimeters. That's the maximum value of W multiplied by 10.2 centimeters, the maximum value of H. And we'll work out those numbers in a moment. The minimum value of the area is going to be the product of my minimum expected values for W and H. That's 19.8 and 10, uh, sorry, 19.8 and 9.8 centimeters. I left the units off, excuse me. I did the calculations off camera, and they are 194.04 square centimeters for the minimum expected value of A, and 206.04 square centimeters for the maximum value. I haven't dropped any digits, we've just done those multiple. So let's look at this result. What does it tell us? <clears throat> a couple things to note. First of all, our expected value for the area, 200 square centimeters, is almost, but not quite, halfway between these two minimum and maximum values. If we drop the 0.4s, we'd see that the 200 is, in fact, exactly between 194 and 206. And if I ignore the 0.4, I'd come to the following conclusion. I'd say that the area of this rectangle is going to be 200 square centimeters plus or minus 206, 194. This is plus or minus 6 square centimeters. So I'm going to estimate the uncertainty in the area of the rectangle to be <coughs> 6 square centimeters. And now the question for us is, where does that 6 square centimeters come from? How is it determined by the 0.2 centimeters on W and the 0.2 centimeter uncertainty on H. Well, I'm going to erase this picture. And let's recognize all the things that don't work. First of all, it's clear that the uncertainty in the area A is not equal to the uncertainty in the width plus the uncertainty in the height. That's certainly not true. It's not true numerically. It's not even true in terms of units. This has the units of square centimeters. These uncertainties have the units of centimeters. That's an H, not a W. Okay, that's certainly not true. How about, in the spirit of trying to guess the answer, maybe delta A is equal to the product of the uncertainty in the W with the uncertainty in H. After all, we're multiplying W by H, so that's a possibility. Not even close. This is certainly not true. These were both 0.2. This is equal to 0.04 square centimeters. So that's the issue that we have to worry about. Where do we get the 6? How is that related to the uncertainties in delta W and delta H? Well, it turns out that to understand where the 6 centimeter squared uncertainty is coming from, to understand it well, we really have to uh, rely on a little bit of calculus, and that's something that we'll, we'll jump into in the next video. But what I'm going to do right now is simply show you how this works without deriving the result itself. So let's see where this thing comes from. And to do that, I'm going to introduce the fractional uncertainties in W and H. What do I mean by a fractional uncertainty? I'm going to look at the ratio of the uncertainty in the width of the rectangle divided by the width itself. And this is, if I remember my numbers, this is 0.2 centimeters divided by 20 centimeters. This is going to be 0.01. The fractional uncertainty is unitless because we have centimeters in the numerator and the denominator. The fractional uncertainty in the other dimension, delta H over H, is 0.2 centimeters divided by 10 centimeters, and that is 0.02. What do these fractional uncertainties mean? Well, in words, what they're telling us is that we know the, the width of the rectangle to a precision of 1%, and we know the height of the rectangle to a precision of 2%. That's how I interpret those two numbers. How are they going to be helpful in understanding the 6? <clears throat> Let's also calculate the fractional uncertainty in the area itself, delta A over A. 
we can get rid of these numbers. Delta A over A is 6 square centimeters divided by 200 square centimeters. And that is the unitless number 0 0.03. In other words, I, I can predict the area of my rectangle to a precision of 3%. And looking at these three numbers, that's enough for me to see where I'm going with this. And that is that in this particular example, it's pretty clear that the fractional uncertainty in the area is equal to the sum of <coughs> the fractional uncertainties in W and H. A very different result from the result that we got uh, in the first example. This result turns out to be generally true whenever you have two measurements and uncertainties associated with those measurements, and then you form a third quantity, which is the product of those two measurements. You always add the fractional uncertainties. I've stated that without proof. The curious physics student wants to see a proof, and in the next video, we'll understand where this result comes from, and we'll see how we can generalize it to calculate uncertainties in other situations. The unit